we're going to try to melt some carbon dioxide, some solid carbon dioxide. I'm going to take a disposable pipette, cut off the top, take some dry ice, solid carbon dioxide, I'm going to smash that up. Then the little pieces that are left, just kind of scoop in here into the pipette as such. You do that for quite a bit and you're going to be able to get a piece, excuse me, a uh, pipette that looks sort of like this with a bunch of dry ice down at the bottom. Now what we need to do is we need to get the pressure in here above uh, 5.1 atmospheres. Carbon dioxide will not melt under atmospheric pressure. The pressure has to get high enough above 5.1 uh, atmospheres in order for the dry ice to form a liquid. So I'm going to take these pliers and I'm going to pinch off the top of the pipette. Place it in the water so we can see what's going on. And as the dry ice sublimes inside the pipette, the pressure inside the pipette is going to build up. And we should see that white solid material. At some point it should melt. And there it goes. Of course, it's going to start boiling at some point. Over here on the left, we see a phase diagram for carbon dioxide. A phase diagram allows us to predict in what phase carbon dioxide will exist under different conditions of pressure and temperature. We see that pressure is plotted here on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. So under normal conditions, carbon dioxide is at one atmosphere pressure and room temperature, that's about 20 degrees Celsius. So if we look at where these two positions intersect on the graph. It's right about here. And that's in the gaseous region of the phase diagram. So of course carbon dioxide is going to exist as a gas at one atmosphere pressure and 20 degrees Celsius. We're used to seeing carbon dioxide as a gas. That makes sense. Now what if we want to make some dry ice out of carbon dioxide gas? Well, What we can do if we remain at one atmosphere pressure is we can cool the carbon dioxide at one atmosphere pressure. That'll lower the temperature. And right about here at minus 78.5 Celsius, we see that carbon dioxide is going to move from the gaseous region of the phase diagram to the solid region of the phase diagram. That's the process of deposition that'll take place, going from gas to solid. So if you cool carbon dioxide below minus 78.5 Celsius, you're going to form solid carbon dioxide. That's also known as dry ice. Now, of course, if we take a piece of dry ice and stick it on the lab bench, like this piece over here in the picture, that piece of dry ice is going to warm. And so it's going to go from minus 78.5 Celsius to higher temperatures. Of course, the pressure on it is going to stay the same, just atmospheric pressure. And so in that case, this piece of dry ice sitting on the lab bench is going to be going from the solid portion of the phase diagram to the gaseous portion of the phase diagram. We call that sublimation. And so this little piece of dry ice over here is giving off CO2 gas. Now in the experiment in the video, what we were trying to do is we were trying to get carbon dioxide to access the liquid region of the phase diagram. We wanted to melt solid dry ice. So how did we do that? Well, you can see from the phase diagram that the only way you can get carbon dioxide to access this liquid region is to get the pressure above 5.1 atmospheres. So what we did to do that is we clamped the pipette into which dry ice was placed. And then we stuck it in some water. Now, when that occurred, when we did that, we probably started with dry ice sitting around here at one atmosphere 
pressure and minus 78.5 Celsius. As the dry ice was placed into the pipette and clamped, both the temperature and the pressure of the dry ice went up. So we started to move along this solid gas equilibrium line. As the gas built up in the pipette, the pressure increased and the temperature of course increased from warming from the water until we hit this triple point. That's gonna be the place where solid liquid and gaseous carbon dioxide all exist at the same time. Let's watch and see if we can't catch where this happens in the video. So over here in the video, the gas is building up and at some point all three phases exist at once. Right about there it starts to look like the dry ice starts to melt maybe here. You see that? Right about there I see some change in the solid which indicates that it's melted. Of course we can't see the gas but you can certainly see that the solid has changed form probably from melting. So we're about here on the phase diagram. Now once all of that solid melts and all you have is liquid and gas, the dry ice is going to start to move, well it's no longer dry ice, the carbon dioxide is going to move along this liquid gas equilibrium line as it warms and the pressure will continue to build and that's why the pipette fails. So let, let's watch this in the, in the video. Once it all melts, the solid, or excuse me, the uh, dry ice liquid is boiling, pressure builds up, and it, it bursts the pipe. Finally, I want to take a little time and analyze this super slow motion video of the pipette bursting. You can see that video over here on the right. I'll go ahead and start play on this video. And if you look down here on the bottom, I think it's pretty obvious that you can see that there's liquid carbon dioxide here that's boiling. I can tell that because I see a few bubbles here. As the boiling occurs, the pressure inside the pipette builds up, and we can kind of tell that if you watch over here. There's a bulge that forms on the pipette that grows and gets larger. So I imagine what's going on, if you look over here on the left at the phase diagram, we're somewhere along here on the liquid gas equilibrium line where the, both the pressure and the temperature increase. We're probably moving along this line right here. Now, back over here to the video, pay careful attention to what happens when the pipette bursts. We'll go ahead and click play, and let's watch what happens. Right there. You see that white stuff that's formed within the pipette? That looks to me like solid carbon dioxide. It looks like dry ice. Now why does that form when the pipette bursts? Well, if you think about it, when the pipette bursts, there's going to be a drop in pressure. We're going to go right back below atmospheric pressure or to atmospheric pressure. So that tells me right away I cannot be in this liquid region of the phase diagram over here on the left. Our pressure is down here around one atmosphere again. Because I see solid carbon dioxide that's formed, that also tells me that the temperature must have dropped significantly too because we're accessing this region here of the solid portion of the phase diagram. So in addition to the pipette bursting causing a drop in pressure back to atmospheric pressure, there must also have been some significant cooling of the carbon dioxide inside the pipette as well because we're back down below 78.5 Celsius forming the solid CO2.